feeding problem in a child can be anything from weak muscles of the mouth or the tongue to a neurologic impairment with the brain so they don't understand how to swallow to a structural problem with the actual gastrointestinal tract being too narrow or not working correctly that leads the child to not be able to feed effectively by mouth. So it's perhaps they can be choking or gagging, or maybe they're a slow feeder. They chew things repetitively. Sometimes they even just refuse to feed, and they don't want to eat by mouth, or when they see a spoon coming, they get so frightened because something is making them not want to put that food in their mouth. Our approach to finding out why a child has a feeding problem may involve many different things. First of all, we want to make sure we get a very complex history to understand what may have prompted the problem. Could it have been that it was a, something that's a learned behavior versus something that they were born with? After that, there are many possible things we may decide to do. Sometimes it requires imaging the gastrointestinal tract to make sure that the anatomy is normal. Other times, it may require an intense nutritional evaluation and a targeted feeding schedule. You may require meeting with a behavioral psychologist, a physical therapist, a fe feeding therapist, or a speech-language pathologist to understand the muscles of swallowing. Are they intact? Do they need physical therapy to improve the strength of them? Uh, if it's a behavioral issue, how can we overcome those behaviors? Sometimes we even require endoscopies to look if there's some kind of inflammatory cause that's leading the child to have a feeding behavior, such as an allergic reaction, eosinophilic esophagitis, bad reflux inflammation. In some scenarios, the feeding problem is so intense that the child just will not or cannot feed by mouth. And we need to explore other options to provide the nutrition that that child needs. This may require the placement of a gastrostomy tube, otherwise known as a feeding tube, to be able to supply the nutrition directly into the stomach, bypassing the mouth and the swallowing mechanism in order to allow the patient to grow. By doing this, we may also be able to focus on either the behavioral problems or whatever structural problem there was in the gastrointestinal tract to treat it or alleviate the actual cause of why the patient had the feeding problem. Feeding issues can be really overwhelming for families. All we ever want is to have that picture of sitting at the table, eating a happy meal, sharing it with your family. And sometimes we really have to focus on what's best for the child, and that may be placement of a feeding tube to provide that nutrition. That decision is a difficult one, and at the CADC, we really want to make it with you. We are not making decisions for you. This is a team approach, how we treat a patient from the medical to the social, but we have to understand it from their point of view, and that's really what we try to do every day.